Uh, one of the things, yeah, I'm going to talk about. So, okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to actually uh, shoehorn in some stuff about the GA4GH effort, just because I felt like in the previous session that people were talking about genomic data sharing and how that would be a good thing. I want to plug that uh, major project. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about how the human genome variation map, HTBM, fits into that effort. So uh, the Global Alliance is a umbrella effort, uh, largely uh, community funded or community supported by uh, many different groups. Um, it has an ethical, a legal, um, a clinical, and a data working group component, uh, all of which are supposed to cohesively work together to forge and create uh, standards. And it really does act uh, as a, well, a talking shop, but also a useful place to try to, um, try to organize things. Um, so I am particularly uh, involved with, in the data working group, which is chaired by my boss, um, David Hausler and Richard Durbin. And um, there are many projects of the data working group, but po possibly sort of the linchpin project is the development of a set of APIs, um, web APIs, for genomic uh, data sharing. When I say genomic, I mean all things, you know, genomic in the very broadest sense. Um, along with the web APIs, there's also a compliance suite for testing conformance, and um, there is a reference implementation, which is, you know, supposed to demonstrate proof of principle. Uh, and I show the GitHub here just to show that there's a lot of community enthusiasm. We've only been going for about a year. We have more than 100 developers now involved in the project. Uh, not all actively contributing all the time, but uh, lots of contributions. Um, so as I said, there are REST APIs um, currently specified using Apache Avro, which um, was the idle that we chose at the beginning of the project. Um, very straightforward, um, but uh, very straightforward in principle, but getting agreement on these things is the difficult thing. Try herding that many APIs. Um, so contributions, um, we have a kind of an open uh, policy. I want to, I'm advertising this because we need people, and I think people from the semantic web community to get involved. In the last year, we've had more than a thousand pull requests to the combination of those um, repositories. Um, and we we sort of started off with a waterfall process where we would try to define the schema and then go off and implement it separately. Um, that, that isn't a good idea. So we've moved to a more iterative development cycle, and now we demand that in everything that gets incorporated into the master branch, the APIs, actually gets implemented within the reference server and has tests associated with it within the compliance. And surely we will have proper CI working so that the various different implementations that are out there in the wild, including Google's uh, EBIs, um, the burgeoning one at NCBI, um, and the one at UCC, are all uh, being tested and that there's a registry of available endpoints. So um, the data working group of the, of the GA4GH is divided up into many uh, different groups, task teams as we call them. Um, I just want to show you they cover a broad, sort of this broad sense of genomics. So at the bottom of the stack you've got reads, this is not well organized, but you've got reads at the bottom, you've got reference variations, so everything genetic variant, there's an RNA team, there's a metadata team, which is everything else, um, there's variant annotation, um, there's a G2P, genotype to phenotype, um, and then various uh, projects, driver projects associated with those core uh, APIs, including Matchmaker that we heard about today uh, in, uh, when we're talking about um, the identification of uh, rare genetic variants and um, genetic disease. So just to plug, uh, to finish my plug, uh, our next meeting, we have meetings about every six months. Um, the last one was in Leiden, uh, this next one will be in New York on October 13th, uh, just after SHG and just before um, the Cold Spring Harbor model, uh, Probabilistic Models Conference. So anybody who's interested, just talk to me afterwards. It would be great to see people there. So, um, so I co-chair the Reference Variation Group, um, and this is a sort of a microcosm of the whole GA4GH process. But I'm, I'm going to show you how this ties into the Human Genome Variation Map project. So <clears throat> our remit is essentially to create a model of human variation within the GA4GH APIs and turn that into some form of global standard, ultimately. Um, uh, <clears throat> and of course, it has to be integrated and it has to, initially at least, we tried to build on existing standards. So we started with a model that was very much like BCF. Um, and now I'm going to tell you about how we're evolving that model to encompass the Human Genome Variation Map project. 
Um, so, okay, so this is the very cartoon fashion, or diagrammatically, the data model of the current variance API in the GA4GH uh, set. And so it's very much like VCF. If you think of a VCF file, um, VCF file is a matrix in which uh, rows represent variants. Variants are simply a position on the reference genome and then alternate alleles on the reference genome. And calls are composed of genotypes. So those are the, the cells in this matrix. And then individual calls on, for a given sample are call sets. They're the columns. So that's, that's kind of uh, where we are now. Of course, this is fine for point mutations, um, but it's, as I'm going to discuss, uh, problematic when we start thinking about things where we have variations in our genomes that don't necessarily correspond to positions within the reference genome or which are sort of messier and in those places where it's very difficult to say what is an alternate to what. So, um, okay, so backtracking. Now we'll, I'm fudging these slides together. Uh, now we'll, we'll talk about the um, HGVM project. So obviously we all know and love the reference human genome. It offers this uh, global uh, coordinate system in which to describe genes, to describe annotations. You know, really it's no, um, it's, uh, it's fair to say that it really does underpin everything we do in genomics. But at the end of the day, it represents one monoploid reference genome in a you know, population of billions. And you know, if you think of all the somatic genomes out there, trillions and trillions of of extant instances of human genomes. And so to do all of our comparison through that, the lens of that one genome, um, to many uh, computational genomicists, seems a little crazy after 15 years. So um, we, we within our project are not the only ones to think this. If you actually go back and look at uh, recent iterations of the human genome, uh, then we have been slowly incorporating variant sequences into alternate variant sequences into the reference. So everywhere there's a red triangle in this picture is an alt loci in HG38. That indicates that there are extra sequences at that position that represent alternative variants representations of the given haplogroup at that point. Of course, um, human, our knowledge of human variation goes well beyond that. Um, and of course, we have this huge number of different you know, catalogs with projects like uh, UK 10K, UK 100K, 1,000 genomes, um, all of these different databases with associated phenotype data and uh, annotation data telling us stuff about the way that we vary as a population. The problem is that it's everywhere and all over the place and not consistent. And not consistent in the sense that we have different syntaxes to describe the same thing. We can describe variants by string, genome coordinate, edit, exons, uh, transcripts, cDNAs. You know, it's, it is uh, really many, many, many ways to say the same thing. Uh, even within a, a VCF file, we can have multiple ways of saying exactly the same thing. So um, not to put too fine a point on it, um, I think this is true for many problems that we have in informatics where we're expressing, we're trying to do the right thing, we're trying to integrate and share the data, but we're sharing it in so many different languages that we are not exploiting uh, the similarities that we could be if we were to put the data together in an integrated whole. Uh, so this is the Tower of Babel. Um, and of course, even worse than that, if we do, you just think about our current data model, this set of linear strings representing the chromosomes, it's, it's pretty crazy. We just moved from uh, GSTH 37 to 38, and just because we, you know, changed some, the, you know, numbers of ends in the genome, we've had to, you know, burn some serious amounts of carbon in order to remap gazillions of reads. That doesn't seem to me to be sustainable. So, um, this is the infomercial version of this slide. Uh, the, the, version, the attempt to create the human genome variation map is really to create a reference structure that includes all of our human variation in one comprehensive way. Um, so just as way of cartoon, imagine taking many, many, many instances of human genome, and then wherever they are the same, wherever they are linearly varying, merging them together. Um, the result, of course, is then at all those intersection points, uh, we have branching, and therefore we've naturally defined a graph. If you zoom in on that graph, that graph, this is a real graph from the MHC uh, constructed by uh, Gil, who's a collaborator on the project, um, with the, very, the thickness corresponding to the amount of difference across a specific region, MHC being a place that, where we vary in the population dramatically. Um, if you zoom in on that and uh, keep zooming in, we can get to individual bases. And the great thing about having a graph structure in which we're allowed to add is that we can actually name all the bases and give them uh, unique identifiers. Here we, we, we initially started with the idea of giving them UUIDs, that's not very compact, but as a sort of uh, 
a sort of a conceptual notion, we can give each and every base its own unique identifier. So when we add stuff to the graph, we don't have to change all the other existing identifiers. Um, so the objective of the project, um, we want to name, we want to include all of the known variants within the graph and give them a canonical form with respect to one another. We want to align them, essentially. Um, we want a single representation in which all variation from point mutations to complex structural variants can be expressed in a consistent manner, and the graph is that, is that data structure. And we want, in our tool chains that work with that fundamental data structure, um, we want to be able to alleviate this problem of reference allele bias, this problem of always viewing the genome, uh, viewing variation through the lens of this one genome. And that, perhaps, is the most important point. So, um, so getting to the meat of this, in, I've got like two minutes. Um, we have, over the last uh, eight months or so, uh, engaged in a pilot project uh, to basically test out some of these ideas. So uh, we started off um, with sort of three aims. We wanted to engage the community in creating prototype graph implementations. Um, we wanted to come up, we didn't want to come up with like any different, you know, different syntactically expressed graphs. We wanted a common format in which to express them and a common API. Uh, so that was the second part. And then uh, we wanted to assess them and see what we could do with them and build them into real world use cases. So we've taken on this kind of um, difficult challenge, um, all three of these aspects simultaneously, and um, we're, we're sort of iterating towards an initial marker publication. So uh, we did agree on a format. Um, I don't think I have time to go into it, but if at the top, um, just to give you a sense of what the graphs look like. You can imagine taking a set of sequences, if you think you can think of those as the nodes in your graph, except that you have to think that the nodes have two sides, two ends, one representing the five prime end and one representing the three end. And then you can connect the ends of those sequences together to form sequence graphs. That's, that's essentially what, a, what, what, what these graphs are. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> Inside graphs, which is actually the format we've ended up, we've ended up with a slightly different representation in which we just have a set of sequences and then a set of joins. So the joins are uh, just like they are in the top, except that they can connect within internal portions of sequences. That allows us to take the existing reference genome as the primary path and then augment it with lots and lots of, in, of branching structure on top of it, um, which we decided was a desirable property uh, for us to migrate from where we are currently with the reference genome to something with all of this branching structure. Um, so in the pilot, we've had submissions from about 10 groups, and we still have a couple of weeks left before our initial deadline. Um, oh, and I should have said that um, we've done this for, uh, for uh, six, I guess, uh, pilot regions. So a so couple of sort of fairly typical human, well, albeit big, human uh, genes, the BRCA1 and BRCA2. We have the MHC region, SMA, which is really, really complex, LRC cur, and then a region of the centromere, in which we only have one submission because submission it's so difficult. Um, so uh, there's still time. If anybody's interested, uh, talk to me. You can still submit graphs. We're still looking for people interested in the problem. This, isn't, this is going to be a continuing evolution. Um, the format is uh, initially the back end is all SQL. Um, that's just to get something to work. It's not a long-term solution. Um, the basic bake-off so framework is, is this. So uh, everybody has submitted graphs. Uh, we then put up these uh, server endpoints all using the GA4GH uh, version of the graph format, and then we run a bunch of evaluations against all of them in the same fashion. Um, we, had a, we have a lot of metrics now that we've assessed. So we have empirical graph metrics uh, that we've been looking at, so basic things like size and cardinality. We have graph theoretic notions of width. Uh, we have rearrangement analyses to ask about whether or not uh, the graphs are capturing specific types of rearrangement. Doing a lot of work on KMAs, looking at whether or not the graph includes all the KMAs that we would expect in the population. Um, we have gene-based assessments. Okay, and I will stop. A read, map, a read mapping and variant calling stuff. And I'll just say thank you. So thanks. Thank you very much.